हाई एवरी वन वेलकम टू गो क्लासेस सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी वर डिस्कसिंग ग्राफ थ्योरी ग्राफ थ्योरी मैराथन इज गोइंग ऑन वेन आई से मैराथन वॉट इट मीन्स इट मीन्स ग्राफ थ्योरी कंप्लीट रिविजन ऑल्सो गेट क्वेश्चन ऑफ ग्राफ थ्योरी ओके सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन सम टॉपिक्स रिविजन ऑफ सम टॉपिक्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन सम गेट क्वेश्चन वी हैव सॉल्व नाउ इन दिस सेशन वी विल सी रिविजन ऑफ सम मोर टॉपिक्स summary of some more topics we will see and we will see some more gate questions some very nice some very beautiful uh, but complicated gate questions also we will see and we will do complete analysis of each and every question okay so let's start now and if you are new to this uh, lecture then uh, remember uh, the first lecture is already available on the go classes uh, youtube channel so in the go classes youtube channel you can find there is a marathon playlist okay in that marathon playlist you can find the previous lecture okay so we will continue uh, for graph theory marathon this is the second lecture now let's start okay so before we start please give me some heads up like uh, audio video volume is everything clear is everything perfect please tell me let me know so uh, satya ranjan is asking power of adjacency matrix is it in syllabus of course it is in in the syllabus last year in gate 2022 uh from power of adjacency matrix there were three questions okay in gate 2021 gate 2021 gate 2022 there are total four questions from adjacency matrix power okay what is power of adjacency matrix uh, what are the applications of uh, power of adjacency matrix there are four questions in the last two years those lectures are already available on the go classes youtube channel okay so those things i will uh, yes of course i will cover in this uh, in this marathon i will cover but if you want to study those uh, those concepts in detail with proof if you want to study those concepts then you can watch on the go classes youtube channel complete graph theory is available okay graph theory playlist is available on the go classes youtube channel in that playlist you will find this power of adjacency matrix and all the gate questions gate 2022 gate 2021 all those questions also you will find okay so uh, anyway so let's start now uh, let's start now okay all the applications satya ranjan uh, all the applications we have already seen so you can watch i think two or three lectures are there you can watch on the go classes youtube channel you can watch adjacency matrix power power of adjacency matrix and its applications all the applications some of those applications have come in the gate exam and some applications did not come in the gate exam i have taken all the applications total 8 or 9 applications i have to, uh, i have discussed with proof remember with proof you don't have to buy heart anything in go classes you never have to buy heart anything whatever we teach any concept any subject whatever we teach we teach with proof so you will never by heart okay so you can just watch those lectures okay on the go classes youtube channel those are available you just check it out okay so let's start now uh, let's continue with our graph theory session so now let's see what is connectedness and connected components so what is that connectedness when can i say a graph is connected when can you say that a graph is connected graph is connected means between every two vertices there is a path okay that is that is that is the meaning of connected so i can say a graph is connected if between every pair of vertices there is a path there is a path between every pair of vertices okay so let me tell you when can i say two vertices are adjacent uh, so okay a simple concept i want to tell you like what is the meaning of adjacent and adjacent vertices connected adjacent versus connected if you have two vertices when can i say they are connected when can i say they are adjacent see adjacent means there should be edge adjacent as adjacent means there should be edge then you will say that these are adjacent now i will say that a comma b are adjacent adjacent means neighbors they must be connected by edge okay and what is connected connected means there is a path there is some path between them there is some path between them okay so then we will say in this situation we will say that this a comma b are connected a comma b these are connected connected means these are connected a comma b are connected it means they are there is a path between them so remember there is a difference for example consider this a b c d consider this and let's assume e e f now you tell me consider this graph on your screen this let's call it graph g so you tell me are these adjacent okay uh, a simple question i am asking are these adjacent 
are these connected are these connected are these adjacent like for example uh, tell me what about a comma b are they adjacent a comma b yes they are adjacent yes they are connected if there is edge then there is path every edge is a path like this edge is a path so yes they are connected what about a comma d they are not adjacent but they are connected what about c comma a they are adjacent they are connected what about a uh, what about c comma d they are not adjacent but they are connected what about a comma e what about a comma e they are not adjacent not connected what about d comma f these two vertices d comma f these are not adjacent these are not connected okay so very simple adjacency versus connected now when every two vertices are connected by a path then we say that graph is connected so when can i say remember two nodes are connected look at this two nodes are connected if there is a path between them if there is a path between them then they are connected then these two vertices are connected okay connected means there is a path between them now when can i say a graph is connected a graph is connected if every two vertices are connected like between every pair of vertices there is a path okay between every pair of vertices there is a path is this clear a graph is connected when can i say a graph is connected a graph is connected if between every pair of vertices every two vertices there is a path every two vertices are connected okay so very simple very simple definition now let's move on so adjacent means there must be edge okay adjacent means there must be edge and uh, connected vertices means there must be a path means there is a path between them you can go from a to b for example i can say that uh, i can say rajasthan and tamil nadu they are connected because you can go from rajasthan to tamil nadu but these are not adjacent rajasthan tamil nadu these are not adjacent but they are connected you can go from uh, rajasthan to tamil nadu okay uh, similarly rajasthan and you can say like madhya pradesh okay so they are adjacent they are adjacent they are connected also they are adjacent also okay so this is the uh, difference of adjacent versus connected now when can i say graph is connected graph is connected if between every two vertices there is a path there is a path between every pair of vertices from any vertex you can go to any vertex okay so that is called connected graph for example this is a connected graph from any vertex you can go to any vertex between every two vertices there is a path this is not connected this is disconnected so you can easily see this is a connected this graph is connected graph you can easily see this is a disconnected graph this is a disconnected graph okay because you can see there is no path between a comma c you cannot go from you cannot go from a to c this is also disconnected okay this is another disconnected graph so these are the disconnected graphs okay now anyway let's see let's move on what about this is this connected or disconnected this graph is this connected or this graph is disconnected on your screen is this connected or not remember this graph is disconnected because there is no path between a comma c between a comma c there is no path actually this graph is same as this graph a b c d so you can easily see they are disconnected there is no path between a comma c between a comma c from a you cannot go to c okay so very simple so this graph is disconnected now let's move on now let's see the next concept that is component connected component what is the concept of connected component connected component this is very simple connected component means it is like islands so for example consider this graph in this graph you have these type of islands like this is a island like these are this is the island let maybe this is like something like this okay or maybe something like this so you can notice there are total four connected components in this graph this is a connected component okay this is this is a connected component this is a connected component this is connected component this is connected component so what is connected component the connected component means the maximum connected structure okay maximal like maximally connected structure maximally connected maximally connected uh, i can say subgraph maximally connected subgraph okay so for example this is maximally connected subgraph this is maximally connected subgraph 
मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ रिमेंबर 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 कंसिडर दिस लाइक कंसिडर दिस ग्राफ ए बी सी डी ई कंसिडर दिस ग्राफ एंड टेल मी इज दिस कनेक्टेड सब सब ग्राफ कैन एस ए दिस इज कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ लाइक दिस इज योअर जी कैन एस ए दिस इज कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ यस दिस इज कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ बट दिस इज नॉट मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड यार राइट यस और नो दिस इज कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ यू कैन सी दिस इज कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ दिस इज अ कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ बट दिस इज नॉट मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ बिकॉज दिस विल बी मैक्सिमल दिस विल बी मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड आई कैन से दिस विल बी मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड यस और नो दिस विल बी मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड लाइक यू आर टेकिंग एवरीथिंग इन टू अकाउंट सो मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड ओके सो दिस इज योअर कॉम्पोनेंट रिमेंबर दिस मैक्सिमली कनेक्टेड सब ग्राफ दिस इज योअर कॉम्पोनेंट this is called component so component means maximally connected subgraph okay maximally connected subgraph what is a what is maximally connected subgraph this is the definition of a component okay like for example in this graph how many components are there tell me this is your graph g like consider this graph g how many how many connected components in this graph let me know so in this graph total four connected components this is maximally connected this is maximally connected and you can note this is maximally connected so total three so i can say total three connected components components total three connected components you have okay so the answer will be three three connected components so because this is disconnected graph right yes or no so this g this is definitely disconnected graph this is a disconnected graph so can you give me disconnected graph definition in terms of connected components so you can easily see that g is disconnected when can i say g is disconnected then what i can say if and only if number of connected components is greater than 1 yes or uh, yes or no number of connected components is greater than 1 or i can say greater than or equal to 2 number of connected components is disconnected okay and when can i say connected when can i say connected if that is equal to 1 if that is equal to 1 connected means number of connected components is also 1 okay so disconnected means number of connected components is greater than or equal to 2 so this is the definition now this is a result is this intuitive did you understand this result read this and tell me is this intuitive or not read this i am saying that every vertex every vertex in graph belongs to exactly one connected component like like whatever vertex you take it will always belong to exactly one connected component it cannot belong to two components right yes or no yes or no because see if this vertex belongs to two component if this vertex is here also and let's assume this vertex is here also like let's assume this is your c1 this is your c1 and let's assume something like this this is your c2 okay something like this this is your c2 now let's assume v is here also this vertex is here also this vertex is here also then it simply means what it simply means this is the component it simply means this is the component now this will become the component yes or no because basically what is happening now you can notice that it is it is something like this so if v is here also here also it simply means that it simply means from here you can go to here okay so it simply means this will be component it simply means this will be component this will be a connected component okay so i can say that if every vertex will belong to exactly one connected component is this clear okay yes or no because connected component is maximal connected component is maximally connected maximally connected so you can easily see that every vertex will belong to exactly one connected component okay very intuitive okay now let's move on now let's see the concept of distance and diameter distance and diameter concept what is the distance distance and diameter a simple question i am asking you tell me let's assume this is your house okay this is b this is c this is d and let's assume some uh, someone will ask you 
what is the distance between a comma b then what you will say let's assume you are here and this is some stranger this stranger is asking you what is the distance between a comma b this stranger is asking you he is asking you what is the distance between a comma b between a comma b what is the distance then what you will say will you say will you say that distance is 3 will you say distance is 3 like okay will you say that go like this then go like this then go like this distance is 3 will you say distance is 3 so distance is not 3 what you will say you will say distance is simple 1 so distance is basically length of shortest path so remember distance what is this this is length of shortest path between a comma b length of shortest path length of shortest path between a comma b that is called distance you will say that okay between a comma b the distance is one the length of shortest path between a comma b this is the concept of distance very simple for example now remember there are multiple paths like from a to b you can go like this or from a to b you can go like this so there are multiple paths this path is also there this path is also there so you can notice this is also a path this is also a path but this is the shortest path but this is the shortest path so the length of shortest path will be one so that is distance so what is distance that is length of shortest path so there can be multiple path for example from between a uh, from a to e from a to e there are multiple paths this is the shortest path or you can go like this or you can go like this so you can go in many ways you have a path of length 2 path of length 2 path of length 1 path of length 4 okay so you have multiple paths but the length of shortest path will be 1 so that is your distance distance between a comma e what is distance between a comma c what is distance between a comma c that will be 2 that is the shortest path distance between a comma d that will be 2 shortest path a comma d that will be 2 okay so distance between b comma d that will be 2 distance between c comma d that will be 1 so like this okay now what is diameter so distance concept is very simple that distance means the length of shortest path so in this graph the distance between any two vertices is 1 okay in this graph look at this graph distance between any two vertices that is 1 okay now let's see the concept of diameter what is diameter this concept is actually very simple Ta can you tell me what is diameter of india can you tell me what is diameter of india like see if i ask you what is diameter of india then what you will say diameter of india if you google it if you google diameter of india then what you will get then you will get like it's like kashmir to kanyakumari that is the diameter diameter means what is the longest among all the shortest path diameter means what is the longest shortest path okay are you getting this point diameter means what is the longest shortest path longest shortest path so you can see this is the diameter of india this is the longest like from north to south this is the distance from kashmir to kanyakumari maybe okay so you can see this is the diameter what diameter says remember diameter of a graph what is that diameter of g that is the maximum among all the distances maximum of all the distances maximum of all distances or i can say maximum of maximum of all shortest paths i can say that is maximum of all shortest paths okay maximum of all shortest paths you calculate all the shortest paths maximum of these that will be diameter for example in this graph what is the diameter what is the diameter of this graph look at this graph and tell me what is the diameter of this graph what is the diameter of this graph so can i say diameter is 2 can i say diameter is 2 like from a to b diameter is 2 like length 2 so this will be wrong are a diameter is only 1 
from anywhere to anywhere you can go maximum of all shortest paths maximum of all shortest paths maximum of all shortest paths so maximum of all shortest paths like maximum of all shortest paths so this is a shortest path one one maximum of one 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 that is one so diameter is only one not two is this clear are a diameter is not the longest path please understand diameter is not the longest path diameter of g is not the longest path like in this graph what is the longest path in this graph if you notice the longest path is actually two this is the longest path so in this graph diameter is one diameter is one but the longest path longest path length will be two like this is the longest path for example a you can go to b then you can this is the longest path you can create this is the longest path you can create okay but diameter is only one diameter are you getting my point what is the diameter what is the diameter are you getting like for india don't say this for example for india now consider this india if i ask you what is the diameter what you will say you will say kashmir to kanyakumari right yes or no what you will say you will say kashmir to kanyakumari okay so something like this something like this you will say but will you say like this okay sir the diameter will be like this i will go here meghalaya and then i will come here and i will come here then sir uh, in between i will go here then gujarat and then and then finally will you say like this this is the diameter will you say this is the diameter tell me are you getting my point will you say that this is the diameter that from kashmir you are going to meghalaya and then okay okay i don't know like what you are doing and then finally you are going to kanyakumari will you say this is the uh, diameter no this is not the diameter okay you cannot you cannot you cannot do like this your diameter will be like this you start here and then you go here this will be diameter this will be diameter like don't do this okay uh, some meghalaya uh, here this is not diameter okay is this clear so diameter means longest among all the shortest path is this clear now please tell me longest among all shortest paths among all the shortest paths what is longest longest among all the shortest paths so for example what is the diameter of this graph tell me diameter tells you that what diameter tells you diameter tells you that in india from anywhere to anywhere you can go in a maximum of this distance for example if india diameter is let's assume uh, this diameter let's assume is 3000 km let me assume then what it tells you it tells you that in india from anywhere to anywhere you can go maximum this distance you will have to travel this is the maximum distance you have to travel if you want to go from anywhere to anywhere are you getting my point what diameter tells you did you understand please tell me did you understand what diameter tells you diameter tells you that in india from anywhere to anywhere you can go from anywhere to anywhere you can start anywhere you can start anywhere you can go anywhere from anywhere to anywhere you can go and maximum this distance you will have to travel this is the maximum distance that you will have to travel you don't have to travel more than this distance okay so now you tell me what is the diameter of this graph what is the diameter of this graph so in this graph what is the longest shortest path see this uh, here everyone is connected by age yes or no can you notice can you notice here everyone is connected by age in this part in this area everyone is connected by age okay so you can see from h if i want to go to for example b that will be my diameter right h to b or h to a whatever okay so h to b distance if you see h to b distance that will be 1 2 3 okay so that will be 3 this is the diameter from anywhere to anywhere you can go maximum from anywhere to anywhere you can go and maximum this distance you will have to travel so this is the diameter for this graph the diameter is 3 the diameter is 3 from anywhere to anywhere you can go 
maximum this distance you will have to travel is this clear let me know please tell me so from anywhere from anywhere you can start anywhere to anywhere you can go maximum this distance you will have to travel maximum three distance you will have to travel please tell me did you understand intuitively think about diameter intuitively diameter tells you that from anywhere to anywhere you can go and maximum that distance you will have to travel so in this graph you can start anywhere you can go anywhere maximum three distance you need to travel okay let's move on what is the answer for these questions please tell me the diameter is already the definition is given diameter of a graph is largest distance is the largest distance distance is already shortest right yes or no are 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 distance already is shortest path distance is already the shortest path correct this word distance this is already the shortest path so like i can say largest shortest path between any two vertices so now you tell me what is for this graph what is the diameter what is the diameter of this graph for this graph you can easily see that diameter will be 2 you can easily see diameter will be 2 anywhere so the diameter actually will be 3 because from this vertex to this vertex you need you need a distance of 3 okay so for this the answer will be 3 for this what is the diameter of g for this what is the diameter of g so here i can say for this vertex to this vertex look at this you can go 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the answer will be 6 for this graph the answer is going to be 6 for g the answer will be 6 and for h what is diameter of h that is very simple from here to here you can go in a path of 2 so the answer will be 2 the diameter will be 2 for h diameter is 2 okay so this is the concept of diameter now let's move on now let's see some more questions degree questions right take your copy pen because some beautiful questions are coming okay some beautiful questions are coming analysis is coming complete analysis is coming take your copy pen gate questions type 1 that is degree questions some degree questions we have already seen some more we will see okay let's see this question tell me the answer this we have already seen right yes or no this we have already seen this is gate 19 91 question show that all vertices in directed finite graph cannot have distinct degrees if graph has at least two vertices this is already proven okay yes or no this is already done this is already done in previous lecture already done with the proof do you remember this proof anyone anyone remembers this proof the beautiful proof do you remember case one connected graph case two disconnected graph pigeon hole principle the beautiful proof already done with with proof in last lecture in last lecture okay okay so this proof we have already done that in a in a undirected graph you cannot have all the vertices all the vertices they cannot have distinct degree at least two vertices must have same degree at least two vertices must have same degree right at least two vertices must have same degree okay as long as number of vertices is greater than 2 may greater than or equal to 2 more than 1 okay now let's see this question now finally this beautiful question has come so this question will take some time because we will do the complete analysis of this question so you take your copy pen okay if you want to understand this question in the best way then uh, don't watch it like a movie i am doing it i am solving it i will do the complete analysis of this question you can also solve with me so let's solve this question what this question is saying this is gate 2006 question the two power n vertices of a graph there is a graph which has two power n vertices of a graph corresponds to 
all subsets of a set of size n, n is greater than or equal to 6. So there is a set, so there is a set, so there is a set S whose size is n, there are n elements. Now we are creating a graph whose vertices, whose vertices are basically subsets, whose vertex is basically power set of S. Okay, means all the, there will be two power n subsets, right? There will be two power n subsets. So these subsets are the vertices. These subsets, these two power n subsets, these are the vertices of G. These are the vertices of G. Now what this question is saying? Two vertices are adjacent. If and only if the corresponding set intersect in exactly two elements. So what this question is saying? This is saying that if you have this set A1 and if you have this set A2, they will be adjacent if and only if A1 intersection A2, this cardinality should be equal to 2. Okay? Means they intersect in exactly two elements. They intersect in exactly two elements. Is this clear? So very simple. This is if and only if they intersect in they intersect in exactly two elements. Like a1 intersects in a2 cardinality is two. Okay. Now the question is asking the number of vertices of degree zero. How many vertices have degree zero? First of all, did you understand this question? Okay, the question is simple and beautiful. First, let's understand this question. Consider this like uh, do do not worry about this n greater than or equal to six. Do not worry about it. Like you can take if you want. But anyway, let me take a simple example. So let's assume that as it can have it can have like for example, okay, six elements. At least six elements must be there. The question is saying. So let's take six elements. No problem. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's assume this is your set. Now we are creating a graph in which the vertex is basically the power set of S. Okay. And we are putting edges. What the question is saying, you know that there are two power six, that is 64 subsets. These subsets, all these subsets, these are the vertices of G. We make them vertices of G. Okay. And what this question is saying, and the question is saying that if you have two vertices, okay, like if you have two vertices, for example, I can say S1, S1 comma S2, these are let's assume subset of S. Okay. So now the question is saying that S1 between S1 and S2, there is age, there is age. If and only if there is age, if and only if S1 intersection S2, they should have exactly two common elements. Remember it means they must have exactly two common elements. Is this clear? So it simply means that S1 comma S2 have exactly two common elements. S2 have exactly two common elements. Okay, so what, the, uh, so what will happen actually in this? For example, you tell me this will be a vertex like in let's look at the graph G. Let's look at graph G in this graph G like this will be a vertex. For example, this five will be a vertex or I can say maybe like this five will be a vertex. This also will be a vertex. This also will be a vertex. This also will be a vertex three, four like this one, two, three. This also will be a vertex. This also will be a vertex. So you tell me, Okay, for example, one, two, three, four, this also will be a vertex. So these are the vertices. Okay, so this is a vertex, 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 vertex. Okay, so you tell me, like there will be many more, of course, there will be many more, total 64 vertices are there. There will be many more vertices. So you tell me which of them are adjacent. Can you tell me? Can you tell me which of them are adjacent? So you can easily see that this can never be adjacent to anyone. Do you agree? Do you agree that this can never be adjacent to anyone? Because if two people are adjacent, two people are adjacent, what it means? It means they have exactly two common elements. 
exactly two common elements okay exactly two common elements so this cannot be adjacent so this will be isolated can i say this will be isolated because this cannot have two common elements with anyone this vertex look at this vertex this vertex cannot have any co uh, this vertex cannot have this set cannot have exactly two elements common with any set similarly this cannot have this cannot have two common elements with anyone this set cannot have two common elements with anyone so this is also isolated you can notice these are these will be adjacent these will be adjacent the reason is very simple they have exactly two common elements okay these will be adjacent they have exactly two common elements what about what about 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 4 what about these 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 4 these will be not adjacent yes or no like this and this look at these two they are not adjacent correct because they have three common elements 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 they have three common elements so they are not adjacent correct you can see 1 2 3 4 these are not adjacent okay what else you can see this 3 4 is adjacent to this this 1 2 is adjacent to this okay similarly this 2 3 is adjacent to this so like this i hope you understood now these are not adjacent look at this one for example i can say look at this and this these are not adjacent because they have one common element is this understood clear please tell me the question is understood who are adjacent who are not adjacent which two vertices are adjacent which two vertices are not adjacent okay so now let's solve so how many vertices are do not have any one like isolated vertices the question is asking number of zero degree vertices so the question the question is asking isolated number of isolated vertices okay so you have total n uh, 2 power n vertices how many isolated vertices will be there so you can notice that if you have this set remember your set is like this total n elements you have this is your set s in which you have n elements where n is already given in the question it is given but your graph is like this okay so the power set is the set of vertices and there are edges we already know now in this graph what are the isolated vertices which vertices are isolated so you can notice that this vertex is isolated this vertex is isolated right so i can say zero size subset this is your zero size subset so this is isolated this is not connected this is not adjacent to anyone similarly one size subsets are also isolated right one size subsets they also do not have two elements common with anyone okay like for example look at this set look at this set and so on and so on what about the remaining can you guarantee they will be they will not be isolated can you guarantee can you guarantee that remaining will not be isolated what about the remaining like you have at least six n is greater than equal to six in your graph you have two power n vertices in this graph total you have two power n vertices can you guarantee can you guarantee that the remaining vertices are not isolated why see if you take any vertex for example if it has size 2 let's assume it has size 2 then it will be connect and it will be adjacent to this array it will be adjacent to this if you have three sides if you have three sides for example if you have two one three then this will be adjacent to this like whatever set you take if you have one two three four whatever set you take this will be adjacent to one comma two like if you take any set one two three four and so on k where k is greater than equal to two where k is greater than or equal to two if you take any set if you take any set k then this will be adjacent to one comma two are you getting my point so whatever set you take that will be adjacent there will be age there will be age 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 
so you can guarantee that remaining are not isolated yes or no so only these are isolated no other is isolated no one else is isolated no other vertex isolated no other vertex will be isolated okay so finally your answer will be how many isolated vertices that will be zero size subset will be one plus okay so that is one and how many one size subset how many one size subset that will be n n c one so that will be n c one that is that is your answer is n plus one so your answer is going to be n plus one n plus one okay so this will be your answer please tell me is this clear let me know this is clear right yes or no so uh, a nice doubt dipan is asking dipan is asking will they have self loop like for example this one to one to will they have self loop tell me in this question it does not matter dipan yes or no correct yes or no so this is the student doubt this is the student doubt a student doubt is that uh <clears throat> will we have self loop for example if you have this vertex like this is your vertex will this vertex have self loop yes of course it will have self loop right see whether you consider this self loop or not but in particularly in this question it does not matter yes or no in the gate exam in the gate exam if sometimes sometimes what happens if some information is not given if you are if you are confused then it is also possible that in the question it does not matter yes or no agree or not see in this question if you read the question there is no information the question is simply saying that there are two power n vertices and two vertices are adjacent if this happens yes there will be self loop okay so yes there will be self loop this is student doubt so yes there will be self loop okay so all the all the two sides subset okay like if you have 2.6 then this will have self loop okay so all of them will have self loop but what i am saying i am saying that in this question it does not matter okay what the question is asking it does not matter okay so this question number 1 is over is this clear so very beautiful question the answer is n plus 1 these many these many isolated vertices we have okay now let's move on now let's see this another actually the same question the same question but it's another part it's second part for the same question the second part the question is same there are two power n vertices subsets of size uh, which are uh, these vertices are subset of size uh, subset of a set of size n n is greater than equal to 6 two vertices are adjacent if they intersect in exactly two elements same question but maximum degree is asking the question is same but the question is asking for maximum degree what is the maximum degree and this is really beautiful question in the gate exam how can you solve it before we see the complete analysis during the gate exam how can you solve it see what i am saying i am saying that during the gate exam how can you solve it like the question is saying there is a set there is a set s which has n elements okay the question is saying that n is greater than equal to 6 and the question is saying we are creating a graph in which vertices are subsets of s okay now in the gate exam how can you solve it during the gate exam like this is what i am saying during gate exam during those 3 hours during those 3 hours how can you solve so during those 3 hours you can solve like this what you can do you can just take s cardinality equal to 6 you can take s equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 you can take like this okay because it should work the question is saying n is greater than equal to 6 so it should work for n equal to 6 so you can take s equal to this okay this you can take now what you can do now you can easily see a simple question i am asking you tell me all the two size subset will they have the same degree all the two size subset so you can notice now 
who are what are the vertices now you can see these are vertices of g what are the vertices of g these are the subsets of s right subsets of s so you can divide them like this here you have zero size subset it will have degree zero right it will have degree zero there is nothing so here you have nothing to worry about so here i am writing subset size okay subset size and then i will calculate degree of that vertex okay so subset size basically like if <coughs> vertex vertex uh, uh, like if your subset size is 5 then the degree will be basically subset size is 0 here you have subset size is 0 it simply means that your uh, this is your vertex vertex 5 it simply means you have vertex 5 so if you have vertex 5 then degree 0 correct there is nothing here if your subset size is 1 like vertices like this these are the vertices what are the vertices like vertex 1 vertex 2 and so on okay vertex 6 these are the vertices so they also have degree 0 nothing to worry about okay now you tell me if you have size 2 vertex like consider any vertex they are symmetric right yes or no do you agree that if you take any uh, two size subset whether you take 1 comma 2 or whether you take 2 comma 5 it does not matter right correct this degree will have will, will be same as this degree okay because there is complete symmetry here so you can notice that whether you find degree of this whether you find degree of this they will always always be same there is no there is no changes okay so now what you can do now you tell me a particular a particular vertex you take like for example a vertex let me take this vertex uh, 1 comma 5 consider this vertex what will be degree of this vertex it will be adjacent to every superset do you agree it will be adjacent to every superset yes or no this will be adjacent to every superset this 1 comma 5 this will be adjacent to every superset whatever superset you create this will be adjacent to that okay it this 1 comma 5 whatever superset you create it will be adjacent to that how many supersets are there for this 1 comma 5 how many supersets are there the remaining elements have two choices yes or no these are the elements 1 to 6 so how many supersets are there these remaining elements look at these remaining elements look at these remaining elements they have two two choices whether you take them or you don't take them they have two two choices two two choices two two choices so the remaining elements have two choices four elements are there then they have two two choices so there will be two power four the degree will be two power four okay so the degree remember self loop is counted here do you agree do you agree self loop is counted dipan dipan here self loop counted okay because self loop will be there in the question the way this question is created self loop will be there self loop included we have included the self loop okay because we are considering all the subset so these this will be the degree okay what about so what about three size uh, three size vertex like if you have three size vertex for example one three four what will be that this will be adjacent to whom like look at this one three five let's check it out this is your vertex one three five uh, one three four this is your vertex look at this vertex and you tell me focus on this vertex you tell me it will be adjacent to whom it will be adjacent to if you are taking one comma three then you cannot take four agree or not you cannot take four this four you cannot take remaining you can take anything remaining you can take anything yes or no correct or not see you are taking you are taking one comma three you are taking one you are taking three you cannot take four if you take four then then they will not be adjacent they will not have exactly two common elements if you take four then they will have three common elements but we want exactly two common elements so here you can take anything from the remaining elements from the remaining elements you can take anything any superset so tell me this will be like this how many how many people like this how many people like this this type of how many people are there 
this type of how many people are there tell me this type of like this type of how many people are there so this type of how many people you have for the remaining elements how many remaining elements there are n minus 3 remaining elements correct because so actually like in the same question if you have n instead of 6 if you have n if you generalize uh, okay we will generalize after some time but remaining three elements anything you can take so 2 power 3 correct 2 power 3 anything from remaining three elements so remaining three elements you can take any superset so this will be 2 power 3 yes or no but 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 we can also do this we can also take 1 comma 4 we take 1 we take 4 we don't take 3 and then we do this is also possible so this type of how many people are there this type of 3 2 power 3 people are there but 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 what we can do we can do this we can take 3 we can take 4 we don't take 1 like we take 3 we take 4 we don't take 1 then 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 remaining how many people like this this type of how many people again 2 power 3 people okay is this clear what is happening here so again you can easily see that what is the degree of this vertex then what is the degree of this vertex that will be 2 power 3 plus 2 power 3 plus 2 power 3 that is going to be 3 into 2 power 3 3 into 2 power 3 understood please tell me did is it understood see you can very quickly do this if you don't want to do like this you can very easily uh, you can very quickly do this just for understanding i am telling you like this but you can easily see like this this is your vertex your vertex is one three four now what you can do this vertex see this will be adjacent to whom just think about it this will be adjacent to whom okay this will be adjacent to that person which have two elements from here okay like two exactly two elements from here should come two elements should come exactly two elements okay exactly two of consider let's call it a1 uh, exactly two of a1 should come here exactly two elements of a1 should come here right the third element should not come like exactly two elements should come and the remaining here you can have any here you can have anything okay from there are remaining three elements who are those remaining three elements tell me who are those remaining three elements who are those remaining three elements those are two five six okay those are two five six those remaining three elements are two five six so the answer will be you select exactly two selecting exactly two how many ways selecting exactly two how many ways from three you are selecting two and 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 any superset you create from the remaining three elements that will be every element has three choices every element has three choices you can take it leave it take it leave it take it leave it okay so finally your degree of this will be what so finally i can say for this vertex one three four for this vertex what is the degree the degree will be you select two of them you select two of them multiplied by the remaining elements they have two two choices okay the remaining elements have two two choices that's it this is your degree so finally i can say here the degree will be three into two to the power three if you have four size if you have subset size is four then what will happen if your subset size is four then what will be the degree subset size is 4 like consider this vertex like 1 2 3 4 consider this so again what will be degree very simple from these you take two people from these you take two people multiplied by remaining two people have two two choices remaining two people have two two choices yes or no remaining two people have two two choices also if you say subset size 5 
like consider this subset 1 2 3 4 5 you take two people from here from these five you take two people you take two people and the remaining person has one choice the remaining element either you can take it or you can leave it take it or leave it take it or leave it okay next six size like finally this vertex just take two elements from here that's it that's it now which is the largest value which value is the largest value so you can calculate you can calculate all the values that uh, that are there you can calculate like 6 c2 what is that that is 6 into 5 divided by 2 so that is 15 okay so what is this value this is like uh, 10 so that is 20 what is this value 4 c2 that is 6 into 4 that is 24 this is a 24 this is 16 so what is the maximum degree the maximum degree people are these these are the maximum degree people so the maximum degree that is 24 so when you put n equal to 6 answer should be 24 so what we have done we have done this we have done this then this we have seen that when n equal to 6 then answer is what answer is 24 answer should be 24 this is the maximum degree that is that will be there so which option is giving you 24 when you put n equal to 6 so this is gone this option gone okay this option gone what about this option and uh, look at this option what this option is this option is 3c2 3c2 multiplied by 2 power 3 3c2 is 3 multiplied by 2 power 3 oh that is 24 that is 24 okay and what this is this is 3 multiplied by 2 power 3 this is also 24 oh okay so here you are stuck okay you got stuck here but okay so two options are gone but still two options are remaining still two options are remaining but at this point of time in those three hours what will happen tell me tell me at this point of time like assume you are in the gate exam okay just imagine that you are in the gate exam and you are solving like this you are taking n equal to six you are solving like this but but two options are still remaining but one beautiful thing will happen in the gate exam after this analysis the analysis that we have done so far imagine you are in the gate exam what will happen can you tell me like at this point of time see at this point of time i did not tell you the complete analysis i do not give you complete analysis but at this point of time can you generalize the result tell me can you generalize the result don't take take don't take seven now don't take n equal to seven forget about n equal to seven can you generalize forget about n equal to seven of course you can take n equal to seven that will definitely work but can you generalize now now you have the knowledge now you now you know how to do this this question what is the idea of this question you have completely understood this question do you agree with me at this point of time you have completely understood the question what is happening in the question how to approach this question okay so now in the gate exam if you are in those three hours then now you can generalize this immediately or you can take n equal to seven of course that is your choice but you can generalize this so let me let's generalize this now now i will tell you the complete analysis so far i did not give you the complete analysis i was just making sure that you understand the question but now let's see the complete analysis are you ready for the complete analysis this is a beautiful something beautiful is coming something beautiful is coming now okay just just understand so you have this set in this set you have total how many elements total n elements okay you are creating a graph in this graph you have set of vertices is power set of s so you have total two power n vertices there are two power n vertices okay and there are edges there are some edges okay now what we are going to do in this question again the same chart we will create we will create what is the subset size 
subset size of vertex and here we will write the degree of vertex degree of that vertex so this chart we will create so again what i am going to do so you tell me if your subset if your vertex subset size is zero means okay if your subset size is zero then degree is also zero if your subset size is one degree is also zero if your subset size is two consider this vertex look at this vertex what will be the degree any superset will work do you agree any superset will work yes or no correct any superset will work any superset how many remaining elements how many remaining elements total n minus 2 remaining elements any superset by remaining elements by remaining n minus 1 elements by remaining n minus 2 elements so any superset so that means every remaining element has two choices yes or no every remaining element has two choices every remaining element has two choices either you take it or leave it take it or leave it take it or leave it yes or no correct do you agree yes or no please tell me do you agree that take it or leave it take it or leave it by the remaining n minus 1 elements by the remaining n sorry n minus 2 elements take it or leave it take it or leave it take it or leave it so remaining re remaining elements has two choices correct all the remaining elements that you have so they have two two choices so n minus 2 because there are these many remaining elements so the degree will be 2 power n minus 2 very good okay let's move on size 3 size 3 what will that what will be that so for example you can take 1 2 3 now something very uh, something <coughs> very easy you can easily do what you will do you will take two people from here correct you will take two from here you will take two people from here so from these three people you will take two people remaining people have again two choices yes or no again 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 what i can say i can say again remaining how many remaining these three not not these three remaining n minus three elements have two choices each have two choices each do you agree please tell me see forget about array see <laughs> some students are thinking sir in the gate exam how we will do gate exam ke andar kaise karenge sir ye idea gate exam mein kaise aayega are forget about gate exam right now you are not in the gate exam you are in the preparation phase when you are in the preparation phase just do the complete analysis if you do complete analysis of 1000 questions then very high probability that in the gate exam you will be able to solve the new question in the gate exam the, this question will not come this question that we are solving right now this question will not come again in the gate exam it will never come in the gate exam again in the gate exam something new will come like in the go classes test series did you give go classes mock test one all india mock test one go classes all india mock test one did you attempt that in that you have some new questions right yes or no those questions you have never seen okay so remember one thing when when you do the complete analysis of thousand questions then automatically what will happen probability will increase that the new question that will come in the gate exam you will be able to solve it so okay now those students who are thinking gate exam mein kaise karenge gate exam mein kaise karenge forget about gate exam you are in the preparation phase focus on learning are you understanding what i am telling you right now are you understanding this analysis this complete analysis are you understanding okay if you are understanding that you are enjoying also right when you understand something new you will enjoy you will get a feeling of enjoyment like you will feel uh, very happy you will feel that you are understanding something new some 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 beautiful analysis you are understanding okay then you will feel happiness are you feeling that happiness simple point during the preparation that happiness is all we want okay just keep improving and don't worry about the gate exam it's like you know that uh, three idiot dialogue run run after excellence if you run after excellence automatically gate top rank will come okay automatically in the gate exam you will be able to do it okay anyway so now tell me so you let me know 
So you can notice the remaining elements, the remaining n minus three elements, they have two two choices each. Each of them have two two choices. The remaining n minus three elements, they have two two choices each. Okay, what about the next one? Like if you have subset size four, then what will happen? If you have subset size four, then what will happen? What is the degree? From them you take two people. You take two people from them. So from these four people, you take two people. Now, the remaining people, remember, if you take two people, exactly two people you can take, exactly two people you can take, you cannot take the third person. For example, if you take 1, 2, you cannot take this 3, you cannot take this 3 because we want exactly two common elements. Okay, two people are adjacent if they have exactly two common elements. So remember, you can only take two people. So you are taking two people. Okay, after that, Again, the same thing will happen. Remaining, again, the same thing. Remaining n minus four elements have two choices each. Okay, so the answer here, the remaining n minus four elements, they have two choices each. The same thing, if you have size five, if you take size five, the same thing will repeat. If you take size five, Okay, the same thing is going to repeat the remaining n minus five people. So from these five, you select two, the remaining n minus five people, they have two choices each and so on. So now you can you generalize if you have k size subset, if you have k size subset, one, two, three, tuck, 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 tuck. okay. So if you have k size subset where k is, of course, this k must be less than equal to n and greater than equal to two. Okay, tuck, tuck. okay, so tell me. Now, in this, what will be the? So again, what you will do? From these k, you will take two people. From these k, you will take two people. You will take two people from these k people multiplied by remaining. Remaining n minus k people have two choices each. Okay, remaining, they have two choices each. This is the degree. This is your generalization. Once your generalization is over, now we have to find who is maximum work is not done yes or no okay yes or no work is not over now we have to find maximum correct so let's find out maximum what is the maximum here okay so let's find out now actually if you notice what is happening so let me tell you did you notice there are two things happening in the multiplication two things are happening did you notice a small observation did you make here you have subset size and here you have degree. Did you make this small observation? Subset size 0, degree 0. Subset size 1, degree 0. Okay, forget about these cases. Now, beautiful things. When you have subset size 2, then there are two things happening. 1 multiplied by 2 power n minus 2. So there are two factors. Factor this, factor this. There are two things multiplying. When you have subset size 3, then what you have? Then you have 3C2. What is 3C2? Can you tell me? What is 3C2? Are you, what is 3C2? That is, that is 3 multiplied by 2 power n minus 3. So there are two things happening here. Let's call it, let's call it quantity B. Let's call it quantity B. Let's call it quantity A. Let's call it quantity A. So this is your quantity B and this is your quantity A. Okay. If you have 4, then what will happen? Then 4C2, that is 6. And this is n minus 4. If you have 5, then what will happen? Then you have 5C2, that is 10. Quantity n minus 5. Now see what is going to happen. 6. If you have 6, then what will happen? If you have 6, then what will happen? 15 into n minus 6. Can you say that quantity B is half, halving, uh, okay, uh, is uh, dividing by 2? Can you say when you go like this quantity b can i say quantity b <clears throat> being being half yes or no can you say quantity b is being half can i say this and what about quantity a like is this doubling can i say is this doubling this is not doubling actually this is not doubling. 
here it is doubling but then it is not doubling not doubling okay it is not doubling right this quantity is doubling here actually here tripling then doubling then less than doubling then less than that doubling then less than that doubling less than that doubling okay is this clear is this clear what what happened here tripling here multiplied by 3 here doubling here less than doubling less than doubling here even less than doubling even less than doubling okay so what i am saying i am just saying a simple thing i am saying that there are two things one is a one is multiplied by b this quantity is doubling sorry this quantity is ha half okay and this quantity is uh, basically like you tell me a simple point if this quantity becomes half but this quantity let me assume this does not double like less than double if this becomes 1.5a then ultimately which is bigger x or y which is bigger x or y which is bigger x or y tell me which is bigger x or y so definitely x is bigger right yes or no x is bigger because you are dividing by 2 but you are not multiplying with enough yes or no x will be bigger if this happens so the same thing is happening here also what is happening see initially you have this here you have subset size okay that's it your answer is coming now your final answer is coming now subset size let's focus on 2 3 4 let's focus on 2 3 4 5 6 and so on so these are these are the subset size now your answer is coming your degree here you have uh, here you have 2 power n minus 2 this is your quantity b remember this is your quantity b okay and this is your quantity a now what happened now this quantity tripled yes or no this quantity tripled tripled but this quantity divided by 2 yes or no this quantity tripled so who is bigger like what i am saying i am saying a multiplied by b let's assume this triples but this divides by 2 who is bigger x or y who is bigger x or y this is tripling this is dividing by 2 who is bigger x or y so definitely uh, y is bigger because you are multiplying by 3 but dividing by 2 ultimately y will be bigger okay so this is the same thing happening here so i can say that this is can i say this is greater than like i i can say something like this like this value will be definitely here the you are getting increasing increase happening okay what about this four this four means it is like six a it is a six a doubling and this is a b by b by two divided by two like b by two divided by two so it is equal right no okay it is equal no changes yes or no it is like this this scenario it is doubling this is also like dividing by 2 so here both will be same correct here both will be same is this clear so like you are doubling here you are doubling but you are dividing by 2 okay so you are it's like doubling you are it's like doubling and but you are dividing also by 2 so they will be actually same okay what about this now here you are doing 10a but again you are dividing by 2 again you are dividing by 2 it's like this you are dividing by 2 but you did not multiply with you multiplied with less than 2 so can i say this is decrease now this decrease will keep happening again the decrease will happen because you will divide by 2 but you will not increase by you will not multiply with 2 so you okay so this decrease will keep happening now so tell me where where did you get maximum where did you get maximum you are decreasing decreasing so you got maximum here here this increase happened and this equaled here you got the maximum 
हियर यू गोट द मैक्सिमम ओके माइंड ब्लोइंग हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू विल से लाइक जस्ट कमेंट ओके If you think this question, this analysis, the solution. If you think this is like mind blown, just comment mind blown. Like you tell me. Like did you like this solution? In the gate exam, you can solve it. See what I am saying. In the gate exam, in those three hours, what you can do? You can take n equal to six. Then two options will be remaining. Two options will be gone. Two options will be remaining. But at that point of time, okay, when two options will be remaining, at that point of time, you will. understand what is happening you will understand the uh, you will understand the behavior of this question then you can generalize or you can take n equal to 7 see there is no problem you take n equal to 7 you can solve it if you take n equal to 7 you will be able to solve it okay is this clear to everyone please tell me did you understand okay forget about gate exam okay <laughs> like forget whether you will be able to do this in the gate exam or not because in the gate exam you don't have to solve all the questions please understand gate exam is not about solving each and every question okay gate preparation means just do the complete analysis of everything so now simple question i am asking did you understand okay this analysis did you understand whether you are able to do this yourself or not that is a different thing don't worry about it see in this world let me tell you in this entire world there is not a single person who can solve all the problems by himself or herself so uh, some students what they think they think that uh, i am sir sir you solved it i understood it but i was not able to solve it myself are it does not matter does not matter not every question you can solve by yourself do you agree yes or no but once just understand the complete analysis once you understand the complete analysis then some improvement will happen in your mind okay in your knowledge some improvement will happen basically now you are upper than you were uh, before this question before solving this question before seeing the complete analysis of this question let's assume you were here you were here now you are here so you have improved be happy about it be happy about the improvement so okay so finally did you understand this please tell me let me know okay so now anyway so that's it this is your complete analysis of this question i hope you understood so finally your answer is what let's see the final answer so the final answer is coming for 3,4 so your final answer maximum degree that is coming for 3,4 so this maximum degree is coming when this maximum degree is coming when this is coming when when you take vertex whose subset size is 3 when you take subset size 3 or 4 when you take subset size 3 or 4 vertex okay so when you take subset size 3 or 4 vertex then what will be the degree okay for this vertex what will be the degree the degree will be very simple that will be from <clears throat> these three elements you select two elements and the remaining the remaining n minus 3 elements or this is same as 4c2 multiplied by 2 power n minus 4 these are basically same okay so your answer will be this so finally your answer is what finally your answer is this this is also correct like if you if you do this 4c2 multiplied by 2 power n minus 4 this is also correct both are correct okay so this is your answer okay answer is option c okay so is this complete analysis variation is remaining right yes or no if you uh, see uh, i don't know whether you are first timer uh, if you are first timer in the go classes let me tell you let me tell you a property of go classes uh this is the property that we do the complete analysis of the questions whatever question we solve we always do the complete analysis getting the answer is not enough for us okay our students go classes students they don't stop after getting the answer if they get the answer they will not stop they will do the complete analysis in every subject whatever subject you take we always do complete analysis of that question uh, for every gate question we always do the complete analysis okay so getting the answer is good but that is not enough okay you should do the complete analysis 
now variation is remaining some variation so let me ask you one variation how many components in the previous question let me ask you a variation can you solve it can you try this how many components how many connected components how many connected components how many connected components in g in the previous question of course take one minute okay try this question giving you one minute one or two minute you can take hi everyone so many students have given the answer n n plus 2 uh, that is correct but how to prove it see uh, the answer that you have given is correct the answer will be and uh, basically there is one for phi this is for phi okay and this is for one size subset these are isolated right okay so these are the components plus there will be one more so the answer will be n plus 2 i agree this is correct answer but how to prove that the remaining will be in single component how to prove that there is a see what you have to do there is a path between every two remaining vertices okay this is what you this is what you have to prove correct prove that prove that between any two subsets of size greater than 2 between every two subsets of size greater than or equal to 2 there is a path there is a path did you prove it anyone please tell me did you prove it like or did you randomly say n plus uh, did you randomly say n plus 2 or did you prove it 
see you are saying that the remaining will be one component you are saying for remaining there will be one component this is what you are saying correct you are saying that for the remaining for all remaining uh, element vertices there will be one component for remaining one component this is what you are saying but how can we prove it like how can uh, first of all this statement is true or false like if i say there is a age is this true or false is this true or false tell me this is true or false this is true or false tell me simple question i am asking is this true or false between every two subsets of size there is age so this is definitely false for example there is no age between them like take 1 2 3 1 2 and take 3 4 there is no age so you can notice there is no age no age between them okay so between them there is no age so definitely this statement is false but what about the what about this statement then now so prove that this is what we have to prove that between every two subsets of size greater than or equal to 2 there is a path there is a path so how to prove it see very easily you can prove first of all you can prove that if you have <clears throat> if you have two subsets of size 2 then what will happen like if you have let's assume you have two subsets so first i will prove actually what i will prove this is the this is first i will prove that between any two subsets of size 2 any two subsets of size 2 there is a path there is a path how to prove it can you tell me this is a simple question can you tell me how to prove it tell me between any two subsets of size 2 there is a path how to prove it anyone Deepan Sweep Sopnil how to prove it tell me between any two subsets of size 2 like if you take any two subsets of size 2 there are two cases possible there are two cases possible either the case is possible like this for example they have nothing common like 1 2 and 3 4 they have nothing common then there is a path you can create a path what you can do you can easily create a path this will be adjacent to 1 2 3 sorry this will be adjacent to 1 2 3 4 this will be adjacent to this because already number of vertices is greater than or equal to 6 you know that number of vertices is already greater than or equal to sorry uh, this n is greater than or equal to 6 this is already given in the question this is already given so what you can do you can create a path okay so you can easily see there is a path right yes or no so this case 1 is over case 1 is over okay what about case 2 case 2 when they have one element common like 1 2 and 2 3 when you have, when they have one element common then also it is very simple they are adjacent to whom they are adjacent to 1 2 3 they are adjacent to 1 2 3 again this case 2 is done so this case 2 is done this case 1 is done so that's it so we have proven it yes or no so this proof done correct proven do you agree or not we have proven it this we have proven that between any two subsets of size 2 there is a path yes and proven okay yes and proven now 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 you can see that now you can see that every subset of size greater than 2 will have age with now the only thing you have to prove is now what you have to prove okay for any now this is what you can prove for any subset of size greater than 2 there is a adjacent there is a adjacent subset of size 2 this also very easily you can prove for example if you take 1 2 3 and so on k where k is greater than 2 then it will be adjacent to 1 comma 2 that's it that's it this is your proof so finally what we have done so we have proven so what we have proven we have proven that if you take any subset any subset you take whatever subset you take okay 
एनी ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू टू साइज सबसेट इट विल ओके सो वॉट इट विल हैव पाथ और आई कैन से एनी ग्रेटर देन टू साइज सबसेट यू टेक देर विल बी एडजस्टेंट टू सम टू साइज सबसेट ओके एडजस्टेंट एंड दैट विल हैव पाथ एंड दैट विल हैव अ पाथ टू एनी टू साइज सबसेट so did you notice that so here there is a edge and here there is a path so that's it this is another proof another variation this is very simple but did you understand like this proof also did you find it uh, like maybe did you find it nice that okay what is happening here we are proving that between any two between any two vertices whose subset size is greater than equal to 2 there is a path we are proving okay we have proven this is what we have proven that if you take any subset any two subset you take whose size is whose size is greater than equal to 2 okay who has size greater than equal to 2 any two subset you take they will have a path between them we can create a path path between them this is your third question now the complete analysis is over okay so now now you are free from this question okay in this question two gate questions we have done in the gate exam two questions came those two gate questions we have done and this third variation you can take from go classes like from go classes you can take this additional variation a simple variation okay and a simple proof but see this type of simple simple proof these are also very interesting they will also improve your knowledge like please tell me this proof this simple proof this simple variation okay did you like did you understand did you feel it good like uh did you feel i can say uh, yeah okay that it is a good proof it is a simple cute proof i can say okay so this type of proof you can say this this type of proofs are basically cute proof in isc in indian institute of science okay so uh, i did my mtech from iisc bangalore so there is a pro, uh, there is a professor who says uh, whenever whenever he tells this type of proof this type of simple proof whenever he tells he will say this is a cute proof okay so this is a this is the word uh, he uses so the the same word i am using uh, you you can uh, basically the professor name is um, you, or you can go to isc and you can uh, you can check it out okay so the professor name is sunil chandran uh, professor sunil chandran so whenever he, uh, he will tell you a simple proof okay um this type of simple uh, i can say simple cute proof he will tell you then they will they will say that uh, this is a cute proof okay so professor sunil chandran okay brilliant professor like excellent professor uh, he was my guide uh, professor sunil chandran so they were my guide in my mtech okay uh, let me just tell you i have done my specialization in graph theory okay so this graph theory was my specialization i have done project in this graph theory and uh, three or four, uh, i think three or four original results we have uh, we got uh, during my mtech specialization so uh, one one small result and uh, two i can say uh, significant results we got okay so anyway let's move on so this question is over the complete analysis of this question is over now you are free from this question okay so a lot of time we have spent on this question but anyway clear this question is clear this gate 2006 question the complete analysis is over now you are free from it okay let's move on now let's move on to the next question so let's see this tell me the answer now tell me the answer for this question this is gate 2010 question uh this is about tree the question is talking about tree so what the question is saying this this is saying that there is a graph for this graph for this graph he is defining this terminology this terminology he is defining and he is saying that id is the number of vertices of degree d id is the number of vertices of degree d in g so he is doing summation so can you tell me what is this value can you tell me what is this value basically for every degree d for every degree d multiply with how many vertices of this degree for every degree d how many vertices of this degree and so on 
ओके एंड सोन सो फॉर एवरी डिग्री फॉर ऑल डिग्री फॉर एवरी डिग्री डी हाउ मेनी वर्टिस ऑफ दैट डिग्री फॉर एवरी डिग्री डी हाउ मेनी वर्टिस ऑफ दैट डिग्री दिस इज वॉट वी आर डूइंग सो टेल मी वॉट इज दिस दिस इज योर टोटल डिग्री राइट करेक्ट करेक्ट दिस इज योर टोटल डिग्री सो यू आर जस्ट फाइंडिंग द टोटल डिग्री दिस इज योर टोटल डिग्री और आई कैन से दिस इज टॉइस द नंबर ऑफ एजेस सो रिमेंबर दिस थिंग दिस नोटेशन दिस इज योर नथिंग बट टोटल डिग्री दिस इज नथिंग बट टोटल डिग्री दिस इज जस्ट जस्ट टोटल डिग्री ओके दिस इज जस्ट टॉप टोटल डिग्री नाउ इफ एस को मा आर टू टू डिफरेंट ट्रीज देर इज अस देर इज आर एंड देव सेम टोटल डिग्री सो देर इज अ ट्री देर इज अ देर इज अ ट्री एस देर इज अ ट्री टी एंड देव uh actually we will see this tree uh we will see the revision of this tree but let me tell you in a tree what is the property in a tree what is a tree tree is a connected tree is a connected acyclic graph okay so this is your tree tree means connected acyclic graph so if you have a tree on n vertices then how many edges are there if you have a tree on n vertices has n minus 1 edges exactly n minus 1 edges will be there so this is the property of tree don't worry we will see the revision of tree we will see don't worry but anyway so tree is a connected acyclic graph without cycle if you have n vertices tree then there will be n minus 1 edges now the question is saying that for this and this the total degree is same the question is saying that total degree of s is equal to total degree of t okay this is what the question is saying the question is saying total degree of s is equal to total degree of t so tell me what is total degree of s total degree of s is equal to total degree of t let me assume this has n n1 vertices let me assume because these are different trees let's assume this has n2 vertices we don't know how many vertices they have right yes or no are the question is saying different trees the question is saying different trees you have two different trees so let's assume let's assume s has n n1 vertices this s this tree s has n n1 vertices and let's assume this has n2 vertices so what is the total degree of s that will be twice the number of edges twice the number of edges what is the total degree of t <coughs> total degree of t that will be twice the number of edges okay so from here n1 is equal to n2 if n1 is equal to n2 if n1 is equal to n2 if number of vertices is same then number of edges also will be same okay so you can easily see this is your tree t tree s tree t we were assuming that this has n1 n1 vertices and we were assuming that this has n2 vertices this was given what was given this was given that total degree of s is equal to total degree of t this was given okay from this from this we found we found that n1 will be equal to n2 this is what we derived so you can easily see number of edges also will be same so you can easily see number of edges in s that will be n1 minus 1 and that will be same as number of that will be same as n2 minus 1 which is number of edges in t that is number of edges in t so finally your answer is what your final answer is what so s comma t look at this tree s look at this tree t what is your final answer your final answer they will have same number of vertices same number of edges so they will have same number of vertices their vertices is also same and they have same number of edges their number of edges is also same so same number of vertices same number of edges see number of vertices is called order right do you agree uh, i told you something like order number of vertices is order this is also called order of graph and how do we denote we denote like this we denote like this and this number of edges this is called size of graph and how we denote like this we denote like this so i can say this also will be this this also will be this so for this question 
the answer will be option C. Okay. But remember, this is also correct. This is also correct. So I can say that this is also correct. This means number of vertices. Number of vertices will be same. No, and size also, number of edges also will be same. Okay, this is also correct. This is also correct. Is this clear? This question clear to everyone? <clears throat> Tell me. So you can notice if they have same total degree, if they have same total degree, then they will have same number of vertices. If they have same number of vertices, then they will have same number of edges. Number of edges will be same. So very easily. So two, three, if they have same number of vertices, then they will have same number of edges. Then they will have same total degree. Similarly, if they have same total degree, if they have same total degree, then what it will imply? If they have same total degree, then it will imply that they have same number of vertices and it will imply that they have same number of edges. So for this question, okay, and this is like this also. In this direction also you can go. So it is like if and only if. You can go in, in both the directions. So the answer will be option C. No. So Subhadeep is saying that we will get confused. No, you will not get confused because, because ultimately both have same, same number of vertices, same number of edges. Are you getting my point? Subhadeep, let's assume you don't know the, about this symbol. Let me assume for a moment, okay, for a moment, assume you don't know about this symbol. Then also it does not matter. It does not matter because number of vertices is same, number of edges is same. It does not matter whether you understand the symbol or not. Your answer will be this because same number of vertices, same number of edges. You have no motivation. You have no reason to select A, B, D. Do you agree, Subhadeep? Subhadeep, do you agree? If you don't know about this symbol, do not worry about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. But the point is, you have no motivation, you have no reason to select ABD. Because number of vertices is same, number of edges is same. Is this clear, Subhadi? Please tell me. So the answer will be option C. Whether you understand the symbol or not, does not matter. The answer will be option C. Okay, let's move on now. Now let's see this one. Okay, uh, one, one doubt Niranjan is asking. So I want to take that. I want to take that doubt. Okay, this is a student doubt. A, a brilliant doubt, a student. Uh, Niranjan. So this is Niranjan doubt. So let me let me take it. So you have two tree. You have two tree. There are two tree. S comma T. And if I give you this information that if I give you this information, they have same degree. Sorry, they have same total degree. They have same total degree. Can I say they will be isomorphic? My question is can I say S comma T are isomorphic? Can I say they will be isomorphic? This is brilliant question. Niranjan is asking this question. So I want to take it because this is really brilliant question. Okay. Very, very, very good question. So are they isomorphic? Can I say, <clears throat> can I say if they have same total degree, if they have same total degree, if they have same total degree, Then can I say they are isomorphic? Can I say they will be isomorphic? The answer will be no. The answer will be no. For example, are very easily I told you if you have two tree, if you have two tree, you have tree S, you have tree T. Okay. For these, what I told you, I told you that if they have same total degree. If they have same total degree, that will imply in both sides, it will imply that they have same number of vertices, 
same number of vertices and that will imply in both the directions that will imply in both the direction that they have same number of edges so okay so this we have already seen now you can easily see niranjan uh, you can easily see your doubt was very nice but you can easily see that take this tree on four uh, on five vertices okay take this tree okay so this is let's consider this is s and take this tree on five vertices now you can notice what is total degree here degree 1 degree 1 degree 1 degree 1 degree 4 degree 3 degree 1 degree 1 degree 2 degree 1 so here the total degree of s the total degree here is 8 and what is total degree here the total degree here that is also 8 but they are not isomorphic right these are not isomorphic to each other clear <clears throat> niranjan is, is is this clear so your doubt is very nice but uh, so i can say we cannot say they are isomorphic we cannot say that they will be isomorphic you can clearly see they they will not be isomorphic actually uh, something interesting you can take any two tree uh, with same number of vertices all you have to do just take any two tree with same number of vertices they will have same degree same total degree like you take this tree okay you take uh, another tree on five vertices you can take for example another tree on five vertices you can take another tree on five vertices you can take uh, another tree you can take on five vertices okay so so like this uh, whatever you see then they will always they they will all of them will have same total degree okay this uh, this uh, uh, this all will have same total degree why what is the reason because if you have same number of vertices then you have same total degree yes or no see this is both directions look at this look at this direction look at this direction look at this direction okay so niranjan is this analysis clear please tell me like uh, the question was very simple but because of this analysis this question has become beautiful okay a uh, little bit beautiful okay i i hope i hope you are finding the analysis of every question i hope you are finding it beautiful okay so this is what uh, you should you should do okay whatever question you are solving getting the answer is not enough when you do the complete analysis then you will have complete understanding okay complete clear correct understanding okay these three c complete clear and correct understanding so if you have this uh, complete clear and correct understanding of every gate question uh, with complete analysis if you do every gate question uh, then no one can stop you from topping the gate exam no one like even you cannot stop yourself from topping the gate exam you will be topper of gate exam no one can stop you okay so anyway so this uh, because of niranjan doubt this question has become beautiful okay so let's move on now okay and this is a question that is uh, available that is present in the go classes test series so i have taken this question so you can see this is uh, go classes test series test 5 question okay so you can join go classes test series uh, of course uh, only i think 15 days are remaining in the gate exam but in these 15 days you can attempt the mock test okay so you can take the mock test package you you don't need to purchase the complete test series you don't need to subscribe for the complete test series what you can do you can subscribe for the mock test okay there are 15 mock tests in the go classes test series okay there are total 15 mock test total 15 mock mock tests in in go in gate overflow plus go classes test series in this combined test series there are 15 mock tests and let me tell you these are the gate worthy mock test like these are the mock test you should solve okay because remember in the gate exam they will ask you original questions in the gate exam they will ask you new questions in most of the coaching institutes what they do they just replicate the gate pyqs okay the gate pyqs they will replicate they will change the data and they will replicate the gate pyq in their mock test so what will happen you will get more marks number your your marks will be more because you have already done the gate pyqs after solving the gate pyqs you are solving those same questions with the data change data change you are solving the same questions in the mock test so of course your marks will be more but you are not getting anything to learn your learning will not improve you will not learn anything new 
okay so those mock tests this type of mock test are i can say are nonsense okay this type of mock test uh, mock test these are basically worthless okay so if you want to solve real like if you want to get the experience of gate exam real experience of gate exam if you want to take then you can solve these 15 mock test by uh, gate gate or and go classes let me tell you these are the gate worthy mock test okay so you will find original questions new questions okay so it's not like uh, you will not find replica of the gate question you will find something new some new variation every question will teach you something new whether you are getting low marks or high marks okay whether you are topping the mock test or you are getting low marks it does not matter you will improve yourself your knowledge will improve okay so uh, for the gate exam your preparation will improve so uh, so you can you can basically subscribe for these mock test only like okay so if you want to subscribe only for mock test you can do that subscribe for only mock test that is possible you can uh, link is in the description okay so this uh, link is in the description okay this link you can find in the description now let's move on so this is another go classes discrete mathematics uh, test five questions so let's solve it can you try this so let me give you two minutes can you try this okay because you should try this is a <coughs> this is a new question actually this is a standard question this question is taken from a standard university from a top university this question is taken so you try this question i want to give you two minutes three minutes you can take but try this question okay so try this Hi everyone. So anyone? See, this is another simple question. Let's try. Okay, let's take a copy pen. 
I am doing it. You take your copy pen and solve it with me. I am solving it. You can solve it with me. Just take your copy pen and solve it. Okay. So let's see this. So what the question is saying? The question is saying that there is a G uh, which is a graph on 10 vertices. Okay. So number of vertices is given to you. The question is saying we delete one vertex from G. Okay. One vertex we are deleting. Remember, we are deleting one vertex from G. Since there are 10 vertices, so there are 10 possibilities. Do you agree? Since there are, since we have 10 vertices, hence we get 10 different subgraphs depending on which vertex we delete. So because there are 10 vertices, we delete one vertex. So of course, what will happen? We will get 10 different subgraphs are possible. There are 10 possibilities. So we will get, depending on which vertex we delete, we will get 10 different subgraphs. Suppose that number of edges in the vertex deleted subgraphs, these, okay, these are these, these are the number of edges in the vertex deleted subgraph. How many edges are in the original graph? In the original graph, how many edges are there? Okay, so let's, let's solve it. So there are 10 vertices. The question is saying that there are 10 vertices. So you can assume that these are the vertices like V1, V2 and so on. There are V10. You can assume these are the vertices. Now the question is saying that if you delete V1, see we delete one vertex. We are deleting one vertex. So the question is saying that if you delete V1, if you delete this, then you will, you will get a new graph G1, right? Okay. You will get a new graph G1. In this G1, you have 12 edges. The question is saying, if you delete this, then you will get this. 12 edges. So this G1, what is this G1? This is G minus V1. From G, you are removing V1. Similarly, if you delete this, means G2. G2 is what? G2 is G minus V2. Okay, if you delete this vertex, don't delete this V1. Do not delete this V1, delete this V2. So if you delete this V2, then you will get G2. In this G2, you have 12 edges. And so on. Okay, and so on. What is G10? G10 is basically, G10 is G minus V10. In this G10, you have how many edges? So number of edges is equal to 10 and so on. Okay, so like this, this is the question that is given to you. Did you understand the question? Tell me. Because understanding the question is very important. Without understanding the question, how can you solve it? Okay. So once you understood the question, now let's solve it. Now you can easily see that. So you are getting 12, 12, 12, 12. Like let's, let's consider these V1, V2, V3, V4. Okay. Consider these V1, V2, V3, V4. Consider these vertices. So you can notice that <clears throat> if you do G minus V1, then you are having how many edges? Total 12 edges you are having. The same is for this. For this also G minus V2, you are having 12 edges. Okay, for this also, you have 12 edges and so on. Okay, so for this V3 also the same. Same for V4 also. Same. Okay, similar. Uh, so same, same situation. Same situation for both of them. Okay, so now you can notice. Just tell me a simple point. From a graph, you are considering basically, okay, so these are simple graph. Now you tell me from a simple graph, if you delete a vertex, like consider this simple graph you have a simple observation. You tell me this is your simple graph G from this graph G. If you delete vertex V, then what can you say about number of you are deleting V delete vertex or maybe delete vertex B. Now you tell me a new graph. You are getting G dash. Okay. This G dash you are getting. In this G dash is basically G minus B. Now you tell me what can you say about number of edges here? <clears throat> can I say, can I say that number of edges here? What can you say about number of edges E dash? What can you say about that? That will be equal to what? From this, if you delete vertex B, then how many edges are gone? Can you tell me how many edges are gone? So number of edges will be this minus degree of B. Do you agree? Yes or no? Are, if you delete this vertex B, if you have a graph, like consider this graph A, B, C, D, this graph you have. Okay, so consider this graph. Like, let me give you this one. Let me give you this graph. So if you delete this vertex C, how many edges are gone? If I, if I delete this, this vertex C, if I delete, three edges are gone, right? Yes or no? Three edges gone, correct? 
if i delete b two edges gone two edges gone if i delete a two edges gone okay so are you understanding that new number of edges will be equal to old number of edges minus degree of b correct so finally what i can say i can say that i can say that these 12 edges these are equal to original number of edges in the or in the graph g the number of edges were what this was your original graph let's assume the number of edges was e this was number of edges so what will happen so this 12 is equal to e minus degree of v1 yes or no e minus degree of v1 similarly this 12 is equal to similarly this 12 is equal to e minus degree of v2 similarly this 12 is equal to e minus degree of v3 similarly this 12 is equal to e minus degree of v4 what about the remaining vertices did you understand this then i will go uh, forward then i will go forward did you understand this very simple you have a graph if you delete this vertex b then how many edges gone these many edges gone okay degree of b so for example if you delete d one edge will be gone okay if you delete a two edges will be gone if you delete c three edges will be gone so if you delete any vertex then degree of that vertex these many edges will be gone okay so you can easily see that this equation you got you got 12 is equal to is equal to this 12 is equal to degree of e minus degree of v2 e minus degree of v3 e minus degree of v4 and so on okay what about the rest what about uh what about the rest for example what about this 11 11 11 11 what about these like what about uh v5 v6 v7 v8 what about them what about them you can say that you can say that the the 12 edges that are remaining uh, sorry 11 edges okay because if you delete them then 11 edges are remaining okay if you delete then 11 edges are remaining so this 11 will be equal to e minus degree of these vertices like okay for example v5 similarly 11 will be okay this v6 11 will be this v7 and 11 will be this v8 and what about the rest okay what about v9 v10 what about them what about them so you can say 10 edges are remaining the question is saying 10 edges are remaining 10 edges are remaining so you can see if you delete them 10 edges are remaining if you delete them then 10 edges are remaining so <clears throat> this 10 will be equal to e minus degree of v9 and similarly 10 equal to d e minus degree of v10 okay what's to do now now we have equations so we have total 10 equations we have now what what to do now 10 equations we have anyone any idea what can we do now any idea we have 10 equations what can we do with these 10 equations so four equations like this so this type of four equation where 12 is equal to e minus degree of v uh, v1 this type of four equations this type of four equations this type of equations are four okay so this type of four equations e minus degree of v5 this type of four equations four equations of this type and 10 equal to e minus degree of v9 this type of two equations this type of two equations so what to do now now just add okay just add all of them just summation just do the summation just do the summation okay so if you do the summation then what you will get so remember this type of four equations four equations two equations so if you do the summation then it will be like this multiplied by this plus 11 multiplied by 4 plus 10 multiplied by 2 this is equal to okay this is equal to i can say 10 e minus 10 e minus this will be like <clears throat> okay uh, you can you can assume that this is something uh, ultimately this will be total degree right yes or no ultimately this will be total degree ultimately this is total degree so you can see this is minus total degree because if you add all of them you will get a total degree correct 
agree or not you are getting a total degree because you are you are adding the degree of all the vertices degree of all the vertices you are adding okay so you will get a total degree so that is equal to this value and total degree is equal to 2e we already know total degree is equal to 2e total degree is equal to 2e yes or no so finally your answer is what 48 plus 44 okay plus 20 so that is your so finally your answer will be what e will be 112 divided by 8 so that will be answer will be 14 so this is your go classes test series question so tell me like uh, uh, i hope you understood this is a new question right this type of question has not come in the gate exam so far this is a standard question from a standard university in go classes and gate or flow test series you will always find good quality well framed standard questions okay so whatever question we put those questions are well framed unambiguous okay and from the standard resources so this is a simple question and the answer will be 14 okay this is your uh, go classes test series question okay so you can join go classes test series you can join if you want to attempt all the test then you can join complete test series you can join you can join go classes plus gate or flow combined test series you can join okay or if you want to uh, if you want to attempt only mock test only mock test if you want to attempt these 15 mock test if you want to attempt then you can subscribe for only mock test you don't have to subscribe for the complete test series that is your choice whether you want to uh, enroll for the complete test series in the complete test series there are more than 100 test okay there are more than 100 quality test okay and in the uh, in this uh, there are in the mock test package in this package there are 15 mock test link is in the description you can join and you can solve some good quality questions okay before the gate exam some good quality mock test you can attempt okay so uh, so far everything is clear <coughs> now let's see actually um, i'm little bit sick so that is the reason my why my voice is a uh, uh, little bit low okay so for the last uh, three four days i was sick and that is the reason <coughs> voice is little bit i can say maybe low okay but uh, uh, the energy is same okay so okay voice is low but the energy is exactly same as earlier okay so now let's see the question type 2 that is your counting graph so let's take a break shall we take a break and after the break we uh, discuss the remaining questions do uh, let's do that yes or no okay so let's take a break and uh, we will meet again at 8 p.m okay so at 8 p.m we will start we will see another question type 2 that is counting graph so uh, then we will see some more questions like coloring and all these things so let's take a break and we will meet next session so at what time we should start can you tell me like uh, you can take dinner if you want then we can start the next session at 8 30 p.m okay so have dinner and then uh, let's meet at 8 8 30 pm we can meet okay uh, also go classes all india mock test 2 all india mock test 2 okay this all india mock test 2 this will be on 22nd january okay so the uh, again the link is all in in the gate or flow website just visit the gate or flow website you will find the blog on the gate or flow website this this test will be there so there you can find the blog you can read about that blog okay so this all india mock test 2 the first all india mock test we got the brilliant response okay so all the students who attempted all india mock test 1 okay so those students uh, though uh, each of those students can tell you the quality of go classes all india mock test 1 okay in the in the all india mock test one in aimt one uh, we had some brilliant questions and uh, almost almost 600 students attempted that test okay so we are ex expecting our expectation is that more students should attempt this aimt2 because remember uh, as i told you these are the mock tests which are which are get worthy okay these are the mock tests which you should attempt 
because each and every question will improve your knowledge each and every question will improve your gate preparation level your level of gate preparation will improve by every question okay these are good quality well framed okay uh, standard questions okay so this aimt2 i uh, i expect uh, i urge i basically i i encourage everyone to attempt this okay on 22nd january on the gate of our website uh, you can uh, you can go and you can find the blog about aimt go classes all india mock test okay so thank you everyone now uh, the next session we will start at 8:30 pm so you can have your dinner okay okay thank you everyone so yeah <coughs> and like and comment okay please like and comment all the sessions on go classes youtube channel whenever you are learning something new uh, in every video you will learn something new something good uh, okay so with the proof you will learn all the concepts so uh, please